Ladies and gentlemen, we have Pete Gallo back. Uh, we are gonna talk about uh, pond water clarity today. And again, uh, I stressed this the last episode, but I can't stress it enough. This is a man who does over 100 ponds a year. When he tells you something about how to keep your water clear, you better listen. This is the podcast brought to you by Webs Online. My name's Justin Skaggs. Let's get into it. clarity and water quality everyone wants to see some crystal clear water in their pond all year long and one of the number one things i go to to keep crystal clear water throughout the year is adding pond plants in and making sure i have a good variety of them as well pond plants are going to absorb the nutrients in the water that are probably turning your water green um Green water is a sign it's uh, double-celled algae growing in your pond. And the best way to tackle that, in my opinion, is to get more hardy plants in there, like water irises. Um, parrot's feather is a great plant. Uh, Acorus carextricta is another good one. Um, you know, a common myth, actually, is that water lilies do a lot for filtrating water. And they're actually more so for decoration than for filtration. Uh, water lilies can actually tend to collect a lot of sludge, so we're going to obviously want to keep them in for decoration, but I wouldn't focus on using that as one of the plants for filtration. So moving on to other ways we can filter out water, um, I would say add a mechanical filter if you don't have one in the pond already. Um, that would be a, a skimmer box in most cases. The skimmer box is going to pick up all the solids and help protect your pump from getting clogged up with any of those solids before it uh, recirculates the water throughout the rest of the system. So you're going to want something in place to keep the heavy items out of the pond. And then uh, aside from having a mechanical filter, you're going to want to buy a biological filter on your pond. Um, there's plenty of companies out there that sell what are known as a biofalls. Um, yeah. Or a waterfall box, in most cases. Um, that's where you're going to have some pads inside the box, uh, maybe a bag of lava rock or bio balls to help uh, collect some of the sludge, and uh, it'll all accumulate inside that box and makes it simple for you to pull pads out and just hose them down, really, and it's a fast way of getting some sludge out of your pond. So I definitely recommend a bio filter box at all times. And obviously, you know, there's, well, let me ask you this question. I didn't have you here to, to tell you something. I asked you here to, to learn some stuff. So is there too much filtration? <laughs> I could never say that there's too much filtration. I mean, I've worked on some very large ponds in the past, in the past and uh, we, we had really large, you know, filter systems set up, bead filters, I mean, biological filters, mechanical filters, you can do ultraviolet lights, plants, you can go all the whole nine yards and still fight for good water quality. Um, I will so say there's no overdoing it here is what is what he's saying. You know, I mean, if you're if you're curious whether you're buying something the right size or a little too small, just say screw it and buy something a little bit too big is, is, is another thing. You know, you might as well buy one step up in terms of, you know, actual volume and, and, and the capacity for these machines and do the same thing with the plants, right? You might as well put in some extra plants. Yeah. As long as it's not ruining the aesthetic, you're, 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 you're only going to increase the health of your pond, the clarity, and also that's all, all going to filter back down to, uh, the happiness of your koi as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Um, and you know what? I, I have to, I have to bring this up really. If you're going through all the steps that I'm just have the we've been speaking about as far as adding filters adding plants ultraviolet light bulbs i mean if you're using all of these items and you still aren't noticing the best difference there's a chance you might have an overpopulation of fish in your pond and oh. as horrible as it sounds for you to have to take fish out sometimes i mean i've been working on i, I, have, I have some clients here that uh, have close to 100 fish in their pond and you know really 
I have to tell them sometimes, like, hey, I think it's a good idea if we find some new homes for a few of these fish. I mean, we got to thin out the herd here. The more fish you have in your pond, the dirtier the water is going to be. And obviously, the more you're going to be feeding all those fish, you're going to want to give them a feast and make sure they're all well fed. It's just our own intuition to want to make sure they're all fed well. But the more you're feeding and the more waste they produce, it's just going to lead to some greener water. So if you have some friends in the pond, uh, in the water gardening industry, you know, um, it would be a good idea to stay in touch with them and say, hey, you know, could you use some extra fish? You know, I, I've got plenty to <laughs> plenty here that could use a, a good home. And no one's going to say no to free, healthy fish. Absolutely. So there you go, guys. You have uh, all that all the information that you need. And and a really I love these kind of answers where the answer is you can't have too much. You know what I mean? That's that's just that's just simple as it is. And if you keep putting more effort into it, maybe you're looking in the wrong direction and maybe it's actually an overpopulation of your fish. Then again, I love these answers. What's the worst case scenario? You start giving some people some presents. Big deal. Big whoop. You gotta say goodbye to a couple of your friends in the backyard, but hey, you know what? To the greater good and a rising tide lifts all boats, next thing you know you make somebody else's pond a little bit prettier, in turn making your pond a little bit healthier. Pete, tell them where they can find you. Philipond.com, P-H-I-L-A-P-O-N-D.com. We're on Facebook and Instagram as well. Check out our videos. Absolutely, and uh, we'd like to have you back in a little bit. We've been talking about some other topics, and every time I talk to you, Three or four new questions come come falling out the, the tail end of our conversation. So we'll have you back here, and we'll continue our talk for all things spring here on the podcast. All right. Great to speak with you, Justin, and look forward to pondering in the future. Oh, man, that was a good pun. <laughs> all right. Take care. Take care. Thank you everyone for joining us for this week's episode. Uh, there was a lot of equipment, especially uh, the, uh, the, the the copper piece that shoots the ions through the water. We're gonna have him back just to talk about that because I thought that was really, really interesting. And you can find any equipment that he's discussed today to help you keep your water clear at websonline.com. Till next time, take care and enjoy your pond.